titled my message this morning is we're going to move out one day. I hope that everybody's ready and uh, I believe most everybody I know in here is, uh, has prepared for that day and made uh, preparations. So that's that's the important thing. And first, first verse I want you to turn and read with me is in 1 John uh, chapter 4. In uh, verse 19, 1 John chapter 4, that's where we're going to, to begin. And uh, verse number 19. Uh, very uh, short verse, and we need to really memorize that and uh, let it permeate our own souls. Uh, we know uh, that one day we're going to move out, and the reason is, is uh, that he, as the Bible says, uh, we love him because he first loved us. And I'm uh, not going into real uh, detailed uh, uh, reasons, but if you look back, and you know, you, uh, I suppose almost everyone in here knows John 3.16 uh, from their heart, uh, that God so loved the world. Uh, when you look back through Scripture, you find out that he loved the world before he even made it. As the Bible even talks about before the foundation of the world, he made preparation for salvation for you and me. He knew what man would do whenever and before he would create him. He knew man would, uh, when he gave him the, uh, the uh, Temptation, I guess, would be a good word for it. When he put the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the in the garden, and he said, "You can eat of all this fruit of any of these trees, but this one you don't touch." Uh, uh, well, they failed, and uh, uh, but because God knew that, and, and because He loved the world uh, before He even created it, He had already prepared a plan of salvation through His only God Son, Jesus Christ. In my mind, my little finite mind, I just kind of picture the triune Godhead in heaven, and they're just uh, the three seated and talking, and God said, I'm going to, you know, we're going to create the world, and we're going to make all these different things, and we're going to make a man. And that man is, uh, is going to fail the very first uh, test, and he's going to sin, and uh, and he's going to die. He's going, and he's going to need someone to die in his place. And I can just see the, uh, the, the second person of God here, uh, God the Son, Jesus uh, Christ, is saying, uh, I, I'll, be, I'll, go, I'll, I'll go down there and I'll, I'll go and die in the place of, of uh, man. And, and so the love is exposed. And you look at Calvary. I, I write, uh, you know, birthday cards or, or encourage or some, maybe a greeting card or something, and I usually try to uh, remind someone that, you know, that God loves you, and sometimes I'll put it there, and the proof of that love is Calvary. And he loved you so much that he died on that old rugged cross for you, uh, as though you were the only person in the world he died for you. And so we know that with such great love that God has, that's one reason we know that he's going to uh, come one day and, and get all of us uh, believers. Uh, but also uh, we know it's true because uh, of his wonderful grace. Uh, uh, God's uh, grace is uh, sufficient for everything. But it's not the main thing in the beginning was sufficient for your salvation. And the Bible says for in Ephesians 2, 8, and for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So that that grace, and the word grace means the the meaning of it is unmerited favor of God. In other words, there was a work involved, but it wasn't yours and mine. It's God's work, uh, the, the work of the Lord Jesus Christ and coming and dying and, and paying the full price 
for your sins and being gracious to offer you and me a free uh, salvation. And, not, and, and then he goes on to say, not a works, lest any man should boast. Can you imagine going to heaven and there's all these preachers up there and one of them pastored a church with 50,000 and one with 35 and they're up having to listen to all that boasting is how they did all this great work. All the boast will be in Jesus Christ. Amen. It won't be in what I did or you did. And I'm glad of that because I, I, I can honestly tell you there was a time that there was a fighter, a boxer, I couldn't hardly stand him because of his boasting. I always wanted to see him get his block knocked off. And finally one day Joe Fraser did and I was glad. And I won't name the fighter, you can pick him out, but he was so boastful and about himself, you know. Uh, but the only boasting you'll do in heaven is for the grace of God that he had for you in that uh, Christ died for your sin. That wonderful grace is available for you for salvation of your soul. But even after you're saved, it's, it's sufficient for every need of your life. Every day of your life, God's grace is sufficient. It's like he told Paul, and I, and I kind of tend to believe Paul had bad, bad eyesight. And that may not be true, but whatever his uh, thorn in the flesh was, he prayed three times for God to remove it, and, and you know, uh, God just said, my grace is sufficient. You can keep your problem so that you don't, Paul said that the reason is left, so he wouldn't uh, think he was better than he really was. <laughs> and so uh, God said, but my grace is sufficient. And that wonderful grace is sufficient for you for uh, salvation. So we know because of his graciousness, because of his love and his grace, he's going to come back one day and uh, get us. And we expect that day to be uh, just any, day, any moment, really, uh, of this day, or maybe if not this day, then we'll look forward to the next day. It's sort of like uh, when uh, you're, you're looking for someone to come to your home. You, they say, well, I'll, I'll be there, uh, you know, Monday, and you begin to think, prepare everything, be ready, and Monday you're watching, you're waiting for the, the, the doorbell to ring, or knock on the door, expecting and, you know, and every time someone knocked, you know, well, it wasn't them. And you just slam the door back in their face. No. <laughs> you know, you, you say, oh, okay. And, uh, well, it wasn't them. That's, they're coming today. I'm looking for them. Well, I can remember doing that as a kid many times looking for my aunt and uncle. They lived in Houston. We lived in southeast Oklahoma. We had a, a 1941 forward and that thing would do 35 miles an hour at least. I, I remember hearing him tell it, my dad, Earl, my dad's name Earl, he said, Earl, I'll tell you this thing will do 50 miles an hour. Well, if you were to live back there, you would say, don't do it, because these roads are too bad. <laughs> I knew uh, you'll flip that thing. But anyway, I know we look forward to them getting to see them again. Well, we're looking forward to the day that the Lord's going to come, and we can expect that he's going to come uh, for us. He's, uh, because he loves us and because he saved us by his grace, and also because he's forgiven us. Isn't it wonderful to be forgiven? I was talking to someone yesterday about how, you know, we sure mess up a lot of things in our life, uh, but we don't have to keep on messing up. We can just turn everything over the Lord and look to Him. I, I know my day of uh, forgiveness, and you've heard it so much, you can probably tell me, July 13, 1969, I'll never forget that day. And I'll never forget the burdens that were lifted that, at that moment when I received the grace of God through Jesus Christ. When I was saved that day, forgiven of all of my past and anything that I could ever possibly do in my future, I'm forgiven. Uh, it's because not of anything good about me, but because of his precious shed blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no 
remission Amen. of sin. And the word remission is the same Greek word that's translated forgiveness in other places. So there's absolutely no forgiveness without the shedding of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and your accepting it and, and uh, your behalf <coughs> for payment for your sin. So we know that he's going to come for us. The Bible says in Ephesians 1 and verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood. You know the word redemption? It means to be bought back. It means to be paid for. Uh, they used to have redemption stamps. I don't know if they, but they do anymore. But you can save those stamps, put them in a little book, and then you could go to their certain place where they'd have a store. You could trade those stamps for different items. In fact, Paul saved enough to give me a fly rod uh, with a stamp. My first fly rod weighed 115 pounds. I, not really. It was so heavy, though. I loved that old blue fly rod. Learned how to fish with it. But it was all with redemption stamps. I for them that way. And so how are, how, is, uh, how are we paid for? How God paid for our sin? Why, as the Bible says in Ephesians 1, 7, uh, through his blood, uh, we have the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Isn't that a marvelous thing? All because of his wonderful grace that we're saved and we've been forgiven. And, and I don't even know what I might do in the future, but I know that I, I'm, it's paid for. Uh, you know, it's not easy to kind of grasp this, but before you were even born, 2,000 years back, about, he died on that old rugged cross. Pay for your hell for you. Before you were even born, he did that. And then someone told you about that and offered salvation. As the scripture says, it's unto all, it's upon all them that believe. And so he offered it, and you accepted it, and you're saved, and you're forgiven. All because of that precious blood and his wonderful grace. So we know that he's going to come for us because he loves us. <coughs> And because of his wonderful grace, and because we've been uh, forgiven, and because he's given us something, an eternal life. When, uh, when uh, we're kids, you know, we might give something to someone and go ask for it back. <laughs> give that back. That's mine. You gave it to me. No, that's mine. Well, God doesn't work like that. When he gives you something, it's yours. And uh, in uh, John 3, 36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Not will have. He already has. It's just like this ring. <coughs> I, I'm not going to have it on my finger. It's already there. I have it on my finger. Same way with eternal life. It says, as he said in John 3, 36, he that believeth on the Son hath, uh, past tense word, has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. It's like a person lost for the first 30 years of my life, at least after I reached the age of accountability. It's like a big dark cloud following me, the wrath of God. Because I didn't know Jesus Christ. On July 13th, 1969, when Brother Nick Michael made it clear that God loved me and Christ died for me and I accepted him, that, that cloud was moved, removed. The wrath of God was taken away. And now he gave it to me. He made a big trade for with me. He said, I'll take your sins and give you eternal life. I'll give you my righteousness. And he did that that day. So he's going to come back for us because he's made us a gift to spend eternity with him that gives us that privilege. And 
he's going to come back for us because our names are written in the Lamb Book of Life. And Luke 10, 20 says, Notwithstanding uh, in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. He's talking to the disciples. They were so carried away that they cast out demons out of people. And, and the Lord said, don't get carried away with that. You ought to really be rejoicing about something. Then he's saying, then rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I did. My name written in heaven. Your name written in heaven if you accepted Jesus Christ, your personal Savior. The Holy Spirit sealed that, Ephesians 1.13. And it's sealed until the day of redemption of, of you, uh, the purchased possession. <clears throat> Even until the bodies that are in the grave are raised up in the newness of life. <clears throat> and then the Holy Spirit put his stamp of approval and made it all right. And you're his. And so he's going to come back because he loves us, and because of his wonderful grace, and because he's forgiven us, because he's given us eternal life, and because he's written our name down and sealed it in heaven. <coughs> and also, <coughs> I know you're familiar with these verses, but turn to John 14, <coughs> verse 1. He's prepared a place for you. He, uh, you know, it would be kind of dumb of him to go prepare a place for you and not come back and get you and take you to the place. That'd be really not very smart. But this is God we're talking about. He's not, he doesn't make any mistakes. He doesn't do anything dumb. And he's going to prepare a place for you. He said, he told those disciples in John 14, 1, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to, I go and prepare a place for you, uh, for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. You know, he's going to prepare a place. I don't know the Old Testament uh, illustration of that is when the... Uh, a man's son wanted to marry a girl, or like the girl wanted to marry her, he would tell his father, and his father would make arrangements to meet with the girl and her father, and, uh, and they would sit down, sit the boy and the girl down across from each other and put a glass of wine in the front and before uh, each one of them, and if the girl picked up the wine and, and took a drink of it, she was agreeing that she would marry the boy. And so when he, that agreement was made, it's like an engagement ring. And then the father of the son would begin to, to make an offer of, of, of dowry, money, pay, probably camels or land or something. And they, finally they would agree on the, what the girl worth. And he's paying for a good bride. And so then the, they would uh, leave, and he'd leave his bride, and Go with his father and start preparing a place for her. And uh, someone say, when are you going to go get your bride? So, said, well, my father says I'm ready. And I'm going to go get her. And the place, I don't know, but the father knows. And when uh, the girl back there was waiting morning, noon, and night, looking, expecting to have the groom to come get her. And uh, someone say, you think he's coming back? Oh, yeah, he's coming back. He's going to prepare a place for him. Uh, I don't know the exact moment, but, uh, you know, they would send out a, the people playing the trumpets and everything before the groom, as they went, they would hear the trumpets and they'd start, here comes the groom. Now, today we say, here comes the bride. But in, the, in that day, it's here comes the groom, and they would run, she'd run out and meet her groom, and he'd take her to the prepared place. The Lord Jesus said, I go to the prepared place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. When are you coming to get your bride, Jesus? When the Father says the place is ready, I'm coming to get you. Any day now, the Lord will come. So we know he made a promise. He cannot lie, and he will come and get us because he loves us, because of his grace, because of his forgiveness of sin, because of 
is a gift of eternal uh, life uh, uh, because our names are written down in the Lamb Book of Life and because He's preparing a place for us. And also because, as He said, it's coming. In, a, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16, He said, the, the word uh, there says, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, call to one another with these words. One day we're going to move out of here. One day we're going to be with the Lord. I believe we ought to be like uh, John uh, cry out all the time even so come Lord Jesus we're ready to be with you when you go there you're going to be able to be reunited with all of your loved ones that, that left you here went on to be with the Lord whether they were old or young you're going to be with them I look forward to that day and not only just seeing the Lord, but I've got two little baby sisters that died at birth, which were stillborn, and uh, one was, and then one died six weeks after birth, and a, great, a baby brother that I never really got to know, but I'll get to be with them that day. I know that much. What about you? Are you ready? Are you ready to meet the Lord? Jesus died to make sure you're ready. Should be ready. And he says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. As our song leader, Ben, has come, we stand and have a invitation. Uh, we will have a long one, but it's long enough. If you need to uh, respond to the Lord, accept Jesus Christ as Savior, do it right where you are. We encourage you to come and let us know if you have. What page? Page 208. 208. 208. We all stand.